me. Can you hear me? Yep, we're live. Yep, we're live. Okay, cool. I'm glad I can be heard now. <laughs> I guess we'll wait a couple minutes for people to join. Okay, I'm going to post it. I love the I love the flipping the camera off. It's my favorite part. <clears throat> I don't really have a whole lot to say about this one. And you probably don't either because you didn't reread it. I didn't, but I still want to talk about it because I do love this one a lot. I'm really excited to hear what you think about it, though. I love Brianna. I feel like she just, every single book, she got better. Yeah. Except when for that one it, series. When know. did this one come out? Either June 2019 or June 2020. I think it was June 2019. Hold on, I'll tell you exactly when it came out. June 2019. And then the last book that she published with Brianna was Rush, and that was when? October 2020, right? Or around May that date? 2021. Oh. She also did, um, what was that? She did a novella. Oh, yeah. Body. She did that. All right, so I guess we'll get started. So. <laughs> um, I love Rush. Not Rush. That's not the book we're talking about. <laughs> I love Control Freak. Um, it is one of my favorites. Um, it is I, it is hard to read, though, because of the eating disorder rep representation in it. Um, that was the one of the first ones where it was like... I feel like one of her more emotional books. Like, I don't feel like some of her other books were as emotional until we got this book. So, I love her, though. And I love, I love that this book makes me emotional. Yeah, I, this one was, I don't know, this just felt really different than all the other ones, I think. And I, and I mean, we talked about this briefly, but it just feels really personal to her. And the whole time I was reading it, because you can kind of tell when you're reading books that people like, they're talking about experiences that they have never, they just researched mm -hmm. and it might be well-informed, but it doesn't feel like emotional. You don't really feel like a connect. They don't, it doesn't feel like they have a connection to it. And yeah. this just had, this just had like that. <laughs> this just had that like emotional feeling to it and I mean it felt like heavy to read while I was reading it and it just made the ending that much more beautiful and I think their relationship was really like beautiful to read and yeah. I, I think I don't know it just it just felt a little more real than what we've read so far yeah. Uh, well, speaking from personal experience, um, because I do have an eating disorder, um, it I felt like the representation was really well done throughout the entire thing. So, and that's something I worry about, especially going into books, is when they have eating disorder, like, on page, is does it feel like it's, I guess, does it feel accurate? Because, like, I... I don't want people to be triggered by it, but at the same time, if you're going to do it, I don't want you to misrepresent, like, the disease, the illness, like, what it is. Um, and it, it, it felt like it was more than just doing research. Yeah. Just like you said. 
I will say um, something that I I haven't noticed this. Izzy pointed it out. Um, and she's read a, quite a few Brianna's books now. She feels like there's body checking in the books. Uh, like in some of her books. And I've never noticed it. Um, so it makes me think that she possibly uh, wrote about a personal experience with this book. Mm-hmm. And Izzy also, you know, she's she's openly talked about it too. So it's not like she doesn't know what she's talking about either. So, Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it just... It felt I... like it, she was telling us about, like, her. Right. It felt like we were reading a diary from her, just, like, written as a book. It felt mm. very emotional. Yeah. And I think just... This is, like, a perfect example of why I loved Rush. Because mm-hmm. it is it's it is so focused on, like, the you know, the, like, sexual relationship, but it's not for the sake of sex. It's for the idea of what the sex does for them individually and, like, as a couple. And I think Mm -hmm. that this is, like, this is kind of very similar to Rush. This kind of gave me the same feeling. Like, their relationship gave me the same feeling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and what I love about this book in particular um, and a lot of Brianna's books, because she does focus on the daddy kink. um, I like that it's not just this person likes to be called daddy and that's the end of it. I really like that she dives into like the different types of dynamics that can be within BDSM when it comes to daddy, dom, little girl. Um, Like I think in every single one of her books, she's done it a little bit differently. Like, Small uh, soft limits, which we haven't read yet. Um, it's a little bit more on the little play. Um, this one, it's a little bit more on impact play, and then um, there's more in rush that is like, um, like humiliation, and and the protege, you know, it's more just general, like BDSM. So I really like that we get different aspects from her but it's still within the DDLG like dynamic. I feel like people have like a really wrong idea of what DDLG is. And I feel like Brianna does a really, really good job of kind of, if you want to know what it is and you're curious, she kind of opens the door in multiple ways. Yeah. I think, I think she does a good job of like, it it also shows that like if you it, it DD LG is not like the same for every couple and like you mm-hmm. I mean you said something similar but it's not the same motivations for every couple it doesn't yeah. do the same things in their life it's not just like I have daddy issues so I want to you know call you daddy like that's not yeah. what it's about and I think that she does a good job of ex- like showing how different people can interact with the dynamic and how like it makes them better or stronger more confident you know whatever so i Mm -hmm. yeah she definitely handles it very well in 99 percent of the books like i said i I do enough soft limits but we'll see how i feel about it when i when we like read it this go round yeah i can see why you didn't like soft limits like i can see why you would dnf it um it's not my favorite it wasn't bad, like the actual relationship itself. It's just the book was boring. So, oh yeah, something, it's a boring premise. Yeah, something I don't really like in romance in general is like when they hook up really early. Mm-hmm. And some t- usually with Brianna, I've noticed that that's not a big deal for me because she just, I don't know, the way that she, I don't know. There's something about her in particular that like I don't usually mind that. But in that one, they get together like. 10% in and it's like okay mm-hmm. the rest of the plot isn't interesting enough that they're just in his apartment like I just I don't really it's just yeah so it was boring <laughs> but all the others have been good yeah I would still agree that one's boring did you listen to audio or did you do reading it I think I did audio it was okay. a long time I did ago. audio I did audio too I think that's her only audiobook, isn't it? Yeah. Unfortunately, it is her only audiobook. 
oh, which makes me really sad. But audiobooks are so freaking expensive. So it makes yeah. sense. I'll do them for free. <laughs> me. I'll I'll do the male point of view if you do the female yeah. Point of view. There we go. Okay, okay cool. Perfect. <laughs> I think I can lower my voice just enough to make it work. Perfect. <laughs> so what did you write this one? I gave it four stars. Okay, I think I gave it four stars too. I think... I don't know what I would need from it to give it five stars. But it just... I think, I think what was missing for me was the exploration of the hero's character a little bit more Mm -hmm. (laughs) because i feel like we got the majority of the story was focused on the heroine and you know her recovery and her relapse and all that but i don't feel like we really explored the hero's backstory or anything or why he is the way he is and i would have liked a little bit more um on that end what I wanted more of is I felt like we didn't get delivered on the premise. Like the premise is that her boss is a control freak. And I don't ever felt, I never felt like he was a control freak. Yeah. Like I felt like he was a dom who wanted to control like their sex life, but I never felt like he was a control freak. I wanted to see him a little bit harder to work with. Yeah. Like I feel like we weren't really delivered on that premise as much as, we I would have liked it to be. Yeah, I think we went from employee to like boss employee to the sexual relationship a little quickly. Mm-hmm. And I but I think also if she had just like renamed it and changed the the summary, like it would have fit a little bit better. Cause you're right, yeah. I I definitely didn't feel like there was no tension because like the idea, yeah. I guess, of him being a control freak is like it's aggravating, but it's also a little bit thrilling and like all of that and it just didn't really yeah. feel that way so it kind of yeah. just felt like he got his car keyed for no reason because he just didn't really seem that unreasonable so yeah, yeah he never felt unreasonable the entire time i was reading the book like i never was like damn i would hate to work for him and like i've had bosses where i'm just like i would rather jump out of a very tall building than go to work tomorrow to deal with you and like i never i was like this guy's a breeze Compared to literally, well, I wouldn't say any boss I've ever had, but most bosses I've ever had. So. Yep. And he was very understanding. Like, it was like he he saw, and I don't think we needed a meaner character. Like, I don't feel like our heroine could have taken a meaner character. Like, I don't think, I think she was too fragile for someone meaner than him. So I, I just wish the premise or the, the title would have been changed because I really feel like it was, he was the perfect (coughs) partner for her. Right. Or if we had seen that aspect of his, if if we had seen that aspect of his personality in a different way, like maybe with different people. And then we understood that like, because of who she is, she, he felt like he didn't need to be that way with her, but he could be that way, like sexually with her. So he felt a little bit more free with her, but he was still that way in like other aspects of his life. (laughs) Um, so it's okay. (laughs) (laughs) Um, so yeah, I agree. I, again, I think that goes kind of back to like the emphasis was more on the heroine than the hero. And I don't think that we really he was the same character in the beginning that he was at the end. So. Yeah, I I would agree with that. (laughs) Phoenix said that she just has to be right here. And Dallas also is telling me that he wants to talk. So he wants you all to know that his favorite part, his favorite favorite part of the entire book, was the ending. He liked that they got together. That's that's his <laughs> Well, then he will really like romance. <laughs> Dallas loves romance. It's good. Well, uh, what was my favorite part? That's kind of hard. I think... I don't know. You'll have to tell me your favorite scene while I think about it. Uh, my favorite scene is 
Dallas barking. Come here, baby. My favorite scene is... <laughs> hold on. <laughs> um, I love the first scene, or one of the first scenes in his office, where he... It's one of the first sex scenes. Um, and he is, like, spanking her <laughs> until she cries. And, like, I love the way she wrote it. <laughs> Sir. I love the way that Brianna wrote the like relief from the heroine mm -hmm. of being able to cry in front of him. Like that was just it. I read this book over a year and a half ago and that scene is so vivid in my mind. Like the relief that she felt and like how free it felt for her to like give this control to someone else that she couldn't bear on her own. I think aside from like those particular scenes, my favorite scene was when he invites her to eat lunch in his office because he sees her like eating lunch in the stairwell and he's like, Hey, my office is free. Like, and he knows that she'll be more comfortable there. And so he like goes out of his way to give her that comfort. And then he comes back and he like sits at his desk behind his computer and like, doesn't talk to her or anything because he wants her to, you know, not feel pressured to eat and enjoy her lunch, which I, I really like that scene. I just think they're really sweet together. Like, I feel like, I know I say Rush is a soft dom. I think that this hero is too. Yeah, he definitely had his moments. There was, there was a little bit where he was like, you know, I'm not going to always be nice, but I definitely felt like he was more nice than anything. Like he had the one scene but other than that, like, he was just very, I don't know, soft, which does fit with, I think, what she needs. But, yeah. I feel like Brianna does a really good job of writing characters that mesh really well together. Like, she knows what her heroines need from their, from their heroes, and she knows what the heroes need from their heroines. And I feel like she matches them up so well. Like, she, I've never felt, other than, like, the, the series we read last... I've never felt like any of the characters didn't make sense together. Yeah, and I also think she just writes believable characters. Like you could you can read them and and they feel real, like real people. Um yeah. So it's almost like you can picture like you were if you were to go out and eat dinner with these couples, like you would know how they would interact with each other and interact with you. Like she just is a very you can tell that she puts a lot of thought and care into who her characters are as people. I agree with you on that. <laughs> Dallas is just deciding he wants to bark at every five minutes <laughs> right now. And I, I don't understand why I wonder wrong with him. So <laughs> um, is there anything that you want to say about the book? Like, I feel like my main takeaway is everything I've said already. But like, is there anything else that you want to add in there of like, your reading experience because I know you read this in like one sitting and you were texting me about it yeah I have been struggling to read and so I I finally was just like okay I gotta get this read so I sat down and immediately I was just in the story like that's something that's so great about her writing is just it's so consumable that you pick it up and you're just like in it it just feels like it's nothing to read uh unless it's the parable series and then it's absolutely horrendous but yeah so i i sat down and i read it like in the span of a, i think two hours and i just was so in love with the story and just it was like it was like all of the the issues that I had with reading previously were just completely gone and I wanted to continue reading and I wanted to know what was going to happen next. And that's not always something that I find in romance. Like if I'm really enjoying a story, I, I mean, I want to read it, but sometimes if I'm in a slump or whatever, I can just put it down and be fine. But her stories, I always just want to sit in the world and just continue reading it. And that was really what I had with this one. And it was after I was through the process of reading it, I felt very, like, almost weighed down, but not in, like, a bad way. It was, like, very emotional. And the ending of them being together was, like, the, one of the most satisfying HEAs, I think, that I've read. Because I was just so happy to see our couple get to the end goal. Um, 
And I think the thing that I really liked about the ending was that it wasn't, it felt complete, but it wasn't as if everything was just gone. Like all the problems were gone, which I really liked. So. What was the epilogue? I can't remember. Oh, gosh. Yeah, you, I barely pay attention to epilogues. Um, once the couple is happy, I just, like, check out. <laughs> I just don't read them. <laughs> Give me a second. I probably could think of it. I don't read them, though, because I just don't care. And I'm not going to remember it anyway. And I don't want the, like, marriage and babies. Like, I'm good. I put it together. Yeah, that's kind of how I feel. Um, I don't think it ended with kids. I don't think it ended with kids. I don't remember. I think it was something along the lines of, like, she gets her master's. That's all I can remember. It's a happy for now, though, right? Yeah. Okay. Not a happily ever after, but a happy for now. I mean, yeah. Those are my preferred. Yeah, I don't. I don't want to like watch you ten years from now, and you know, my my thing with I want to watch people struggle to get to happiness, and then once they're happy, I'm like, it's whatever. Same. How, howdy, howdy. Hi, May. <laughs> what are you doing? Have you read Control Freak? I know you haven't. <laughs> I love that May popped in here. I know she's not read this book. <laughs> I think that's what happens with the majority of people. They're like, we're just here to say, hey, how's it going? Yeah. And they're like, we've not read this. You know what? Fair. <laughs> I don't blame people for not reading that last one. No. God, no. I'm very glad we. I'm very glad we did it all in one month. There's hey. Isabel. Are you all on <laughs> Facetime still? I bet. Are I guarantee you all are both still on Facetime. I don't, Izzy's not read read this book either. I think it's a pretty good one. Oh, they're not on FaceTime anymore. Yeah, Izzy, this one has all your triggers. I told you not to read it. Uh, me and Ashley were talking about... Uh, they're still on FaceTime. They, we were talking... <laughs> we know, May. We were talking about how we think Brianna Hale... Um, For the leeches. It's always the leeches. You have also read uh, The Black Fox, and you liked it. The Black Fox. Yeah, she liked The Black Fox. Justice, Justice for, for Leeches. leeches. She's, they're trolling us now. <laughs> I don't disagree. Anyway, we were talking about how we think that um, Brianna Hill wrote from personal experience on this eating disorder. Um, Izzy, you were telling me about the body checking that she does in books. And I brought that up earlier, but I don't know which book she does it in and how she does it. So if you're still here, please elaborate. Because I I I really think that she writes from personal experience. Have they disappeared? No. Okay, they're still here. What book? Where does she do that, though? Like, how does she do it in the books?
Because you're the one that noticed it. I hadn't noticed it. I think you noticed it when you were reading the protege. Oh, in the, the Lilith, Lilith book. book. Okay. Yeah, I, I didn't notice that. Yes, May, you've read two Brianna Hales. <laughs> oh, you've read three because you also read a Lilith. Speaking of, I know this isn't the Lilith Vincent live show, but I did finish Third Comes Vengeance. And? Uh, she could have cut that entire middle part out. Yeah, I don't disagree, but also Lorenzo holding the baby, I cried. So. Okay. I Both was times. so annoyed with the fact that we had 30% of the book is just the breeding kink. Uh, yeah um knocked it down to three and a half uh, i still get five stars i didn't want to pick it up ah oh, there's there's stiff yeah yeah I, may did not like the first comes blood what she hated it why it's so good it's may so hated good it. It is so good. It is everything that you could possibly want in a book. It's fantastic. So you say that, but Mai didn't like it. Okay, maybe it's not everything that she could want in a book. It's everything I wanted in a book. It's everything I wanted in a book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I loved it. I, I also kind of felt that way reading Third Comes Vengeance, but I was like... You know, I already have so much love for this series that I just had to give it five stars. Like, I feel like I didn't have a choice. But I do agree that I it, it was a little drawn out. And, like, also I felt a little bit like one of the the dudes was, like, completely pointless. He was just, oh, like, not even, I, not even a person. <laughs> I felt like two of them could have been one character. Yeah, it was... Um, ben, ben, then, Vincius and Cassian? Yeah, they were like, like... They both could have been one character. Yeah. One dude, he just didn't even, like, feel... He had, like, nothing. His his whole being was that he had to be perfect because he grew up poor. And that was, like, all of the character development she gave him. I was like, come on. I have not. I have seen it going around, and I'm interested in it. Did you read it? I loved it. May also that's, loved it. That's the Peter Pan? Is that the Peter Pan? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, sell it to me. What are, what, what are the tropes? What is it? Captor captive. Uh, reverse harem. Faye. Um, really strong female lead. Is there a knife play in this one? He literally rips someone's heart out of their chest because they talk to her. So, possessive and controlling Un hero. Unhinged hero. Yes. Yeah. We love it. There's knife is there knife play? I don't know if you're saying yes to knife play, May, but a lot of smut, apparently. I don't it there was a lot of smut. It was good smut. I didn't I didn't hate it. I and Winnie is amazing. The new book comes out the end of the month i might have to change my dark romance readers on tbr because this it's is good. sounding really good it's it's good i gave it no, five stars izzy gave it five stars and may gave it five stars no knife play then no. what then what was it that it was in there i feel like it, there was something something kinky in there and i don't remember what it was Oh, there's a mystery element? It's really good. There's like a mystery subplot. Howdy, howdy. Okay. I'll have to I'll have to add it. Was it is it long? No, it's like a hundred and seventy some or hundred and ninety pages. Mm. Hold on, I'll tell you exactly how long it is. Okay, I might have to add it to my TBR. 
It's good. It's 192 pages. Hmm. Yeah, I'll have to read it. It sounds good. I've just been reading so many, like, of these really hyped uh, dark romances recently, and they're just not not good. This one, I'm just, this one, I'm, this one's good. Okay. I'm tired of three stars. <laughs> oh, same. This one was fantastic. I loved this one. I'm so sad you gave that three stars. Three and a half. You would have knocked out that entire breeding kink scene with the with the thirty percent of the book just being her getting pregnant. Would have been a four and a half. Yeah. Um. It was Never King. Yes, the Never King. It, and he does rip her heart out. It's fantastic. So is it like? Is it like speculative? What is it? Is there like Matt? You said Faye, didn't you? Yeah, there's Faye. Okay. It's like, is it paranormal or is it like fantasy? I think it's paranormal. But he rips a, a guy's throat or heart out of his chest because he gets jealous. It's, it's quite intense. Intense <laughs> reaction. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> like, Seems a little dramatic. But uh, okay. but okay, Mesa's fantasy. Okay. I, I would agree with that. Okay. But it's I'll fantastic. To, I'll, I'll have to I'll have to read it. It's so good. Welcome in. Hi Carrie. Oh yeah, portal fantasy. It, that does make sense because he has to take her to he she starts out in like the real world like our world and on her 18th birthday he comes and takes her to uh, his world okay so, so like every anime ever okay got it yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> I think it's funny that all everybody has joined in the conversation after we've already discussed the book. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Did everyone think it was 7.30? Because that's fair. It's okay. I need to... I'm excited to read the uh, the group book for the Dark Romance Readathon. What is it? Mafia Princess or whatever? Uh, Dark, Dark Mafia, Dark Mafia Prince. Prince. Yeah. It's long. By Annika Martin. But it's so, it's going to be so good. He cuts off a finger. Someone's finger gets chopped off. Oh, Neverland. Duh. I, I don't, I, I don't know why that didn't click in my head. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be interesting. I, I, there's another mafia that's been going around that everybody is reading right now. And it has a surprise pregnancy, and I, I want to try it because it sounds very good, but also, like, surprise pregnancy is not my thing. I don't like surprise pregnancy. I don't like secret baby that much either. No. Just, I, just kids in general I tend not to like in my romances. I do like single parent. <sighs> I mean, eh. I do most like single of, parent. Most of the time, I just feel like the story would have been better without the kid. That's usually how I feel. Mm -hmm. so. Yes. Mafia mistress. Yes. I think it's like fiance's dad or something. I think. Let me just get right up in the camera here. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure you did your eyeliner well. Make sure it matches. Yeah, you want to see it? 
Oh, go. it kind of does. Look at that. Oh my God. <laughs> Why do you let me on this? I... <laughs> Mafia Mistress, you have it on your TBR? Hmm, I might read I might wait till you read it. <laughs> I love Carrie's comment. I have kids yep. in real life, that's enough. I don't have kids in real life, but I know kids exist, and that's enough for me. I don't need to read them, too. <laughs> I have dogs that act like children. And a cat that acts like a child, too, so. Yeah. I have seven animals. That's plenty for me. I don't need kids as well. You do have a lot of animals. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. So many. Mm -hmm. All the little ferrets and the cats. Don't you have a leopard gecko too? Mm hmm. Yeah. You and, have a so many and a tortoise. And a tortoise. Mm hmm. So many babies. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll wait. A surprise pregnancy is not happy. <laughs> no. I love it. Tamika? I'm filming after this. <laughs> this is my also my filming face. It's your filming face? Mm -hmm. I uh, I was on FaceTime with Izzy and May and I was like, I'm doing my makeup. So I'm going to be filming after this. And thank you, Carrie. And then tomorrow I'm going to a concert. Thank you, Dallas. Um, because I get to see Asma and Kills tomorrow. And I cannot wait. So, try to decide what kind of makeup I'm doing tomorrow. I don't I know if not color done. on the eye is going to, like, throw off with the red hair or not. I have not been to a concert in a very long time. Um, I went to two last year. One in November. Two in November. Two in November. That was the first one since the pandemic, before the pandemic started. November 2019 and then November 2021. So, I'm so excited about this concert. What are you doing next, next Saturday? Saturday? Next Saturday, I'm going to Lowe's. With Megan. And we're also going to go to the Mexican restaurant and find to find Marco. And we're going to take Baby Kadom's shopping for Mike very eventful that's, weekend. Yeah, that's way more interesting than a concert for sure. Agreed. Love Lowe's. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm getting a snake plant. I was promised I could get a snake plant. So. I mean, she did drive over four hours to get you your bookshelf. So I feel like you, you owe her a Lowe's trip. Yeah. Well, agree. <laughs> Thank you, Steph. Oh my god, you're gonna give me a hug? May, it's okay. If did someone kidnap you? You've been giving me a lot of hugs lately. I'm getting concerned. She gave me a hug at the concert or at the at the convention last time I saw her. More than one hug. Are you okay? I'm very concerned. May doesn't like anyone to touch her. Oh, yeah. And and that's that's several Lowe's trips right there. Yeah. See, May actually hates the Lowe's. May, would you like to tell her why we're going to Lowe's? How do you hate Lowe's? May does not like the Lowe's. How do you hate Lowe's? It smells like heaven. I do like the way the Lowe's smells. I'm going to go check on May. <laughs> I think you need to. There we go. Um. Yeah. That'll <laughs> do it. Section. I like Lowe's. Are you okay? Come here. Dallas is huffing, so. <coughs> I'm going to be her wing woman in Lowe's. 
Oh, okay. I'm Perfect. gonna I'm gonna pretend to not know what I'm what I'm doing, and I need help, and then she's gonna go oh. get the help for me, and then they'll be able to strike up a conversation while they're helping me, or I can go get them to get help, and then she can strike up the conversation with them. So. Oh, make sure the section you go in, you're very knowledgeable about, so that when you go get help, you can impress him or them with whatever you're talking about. But don't make sh- make sure you don't know more than them. Just marginally more than Tamika does. This is a good idea. I like this plan. So, like... I can play reason- dumb. Last time <laughs> I went to Lowe's trying to pick someone up, I went in for a doorknob. Okay. Yeah, you can't really do much research into doorknobs. <laughs> I said I need a doorknob. <laughs> Maybe do some do some uh, investigation into different types of screws and then go from there. <laughs> I need a very specific type of screw. What kind of screw do you need? I don't know. That's why you work here, not me. Exactly. Maybe maybe don't say that. That's probably not a good thing to say if you're trying to pick them up. If they can't take the humor. Oh, perfect. That is good. I like the idea That's of a good out one. something too high. That's a good one. Make sure if you there are any ladders around that you move them away. There are there are quite quite a many. Quite there are a many. lot. Yes. Lots of screws. Oh my god, I gotta tell you what my dad said last night because this is hilarious. So my, my air conditioner caught on fire last night. Okay, it sounds worse than it actually is. It didn't catch on a big fire. It caught like this much on fire. Um, it And we, we fixed it. So my dad took the screw out because he was like replacing the thing that needed to be replaced. And he said, don't let me forget my screws laying here. And I said, okay. So he goes to go get something. And I said, hey, your screw, r- screw's laying there. He said, I don't do much screwing anymore. And I was like, okay. <laughs> Sorry, Dad. <laughs> Thanks. Good topic of conversation. All right. Like, love that. Thank you. How the heck did your air conditioning catch on fire? When was the last time you had it serviced? If you have to, if you have to think about it, it's it's been probably too long. Last fall. Okay, yeah, that's not bad. No, I have to have it worked on every four to six months because it goes out every four to six months or sooner. Why? It's a very old air con- It's very old. It's 21 years old. I mean, yeah. Yeah, my dad just Is keeps it, fixing it. It's probably not the most cost effective, but it's fine. Well, he says it is, so I just listen to him. <laughs> I don't pay for it. He does, so it's not oh. my problem. There you go. That's that's so, what matters. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's his air conditioning unit, so. That's, yes. Oh, yes, he needs to. However, my yes. landlord is my father. So. There's yeah. a weak spot in my floor, too, and he saw it, he, fe- he felt it yesterday, and he goes, hmm, that's not gonna be good. Okay. Thank you, father. You know what that means, right? It means the floor's caving in. It means you probably you pr- you probably have a leak somewhere. You probably have a water leak somewhere. That sounds like a a problem for my landlord. What are you What are you in? I'm in a trailer. How old is it? Twenty one years old. That's not too bad. But, I mean, you probably, yeah. I once again say this is a problem for my landlord. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, my my uh, my day job is this, so. Yeah, well. I hate to hear it for pops. That's not a big deal. It'll be yeah. fine. I won't live here forever. I'll move yeah. out and, like. Year and a half? Hopefully just, less than that. I mean, just make sure your foot doesn't go through and you're good. Yeah. 
And if it does, oh man. And, and if it now? does, just put some plywood down. That's cool. Good idea. And then get We're not even talking about the book. We're not even talking about the book. Not at all. <laughs> All right, well, I guess we should probably end on that note then. Some some home repair conversations for you. <laughs> so I guess we will see everybody next month. Do you have any closing yeah. thoughts, Kamika? I'm pulling up what our next book is. It is Little Dancer? Is that what it's called? Little Dancer? Little Dancer is next. Yes, that's what is next. So what are we reading list? Soft Limits? It's not even on this list. Did I just skip it? You did. Oh, well, it's not even on here. Well, we'll we'll just we'll just pretend it doesn't exist. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I guess we will see all of you next month, and hopefully we have some we can chat about uh, books instead of flooring home um, repair. <laughs> home, home repair. Um. Yes, we're we're really out here doing it, aren't we? We're Best on top book of club. It. We really are. Yeah. All right. I don't know <laughs> who wouldn't want to read in this book club with us. Obviously, we talk about we really dig deep into the books and and talk about the important stuff. And then when we're done, we talk about super relevant topics like my flooring and my air conditioning. Obviously, catching yeah. fire. Obviously, so. and and how your dad doesn't screw anymore. It's yeah, super that too. <laughs> He did ask me if I was going to go into the Marines. And I said, what are you talking about? He said, because you got that boat on your arm. So you're going into the Marines or the Navy. And I just looked at him. And I was like, what are you talking about? He said, what's that mean? Like, he hasn't seen this tattoo for over a year. I'm like, I got it to make you ask questions. (laughs) Anyway, that's my family. Well, you know. See, very relevant conversations we have over here. My, uh, my, the extent of the, the tattoo conversations I have are, um, if, if God wanted you to have tattoos, you would have them. You wouldn't have to get them put on you. You would have been born with them. If God didn't want me to have tattoos, why did he create them? So that's all folks for, for the, (laughs) for the night. We will see you guys, uh, next month. Bye.